So thanks so much, Peter. And um, you forgot to mention Mayor Eric Garcetti. Um, so it is a joy and an honor to be back on campus. I'm, I'm here a lot. Uh, as Peter said, he and I actually ended up in classes together upon reflection. We both remember taking Donald Cram's organic chemistry class where the Nobel laureate got up on the desk and would play the guitar while we were taking our finals, thinking it was not stressing us out even more. <laughs> <laughs> Love being a Bruin. Um, so I want to talk just a little bit about what we're doing at the city of Los Angeles. But more importantly, why people are coming to the city of Los Angeles. So here is a set of logos. You may recognize some of them. These are all places that I've worked. So I like to think that I work at really interesting organizations that have amazing opportunities in technology and really, really, really tough problems around collaboration and knowledge sharing and how we're really going to change the world. So when I was working at the White House, I was the evangelist. The only person in the federal government, actually, with that job title. <laughs> the evangelist for data.gov and helped to build the open data movement here in the United States and across the world, which is why I ended up at the World Bank, where I've been doing that work in Central Africa for the last two years. I'm a professor here at UCLA Extension and have been for 17 years. Love all my students, so shout out to any of them. Um, and other places like Disney, a nonprofit with the Nobel family called World Peace One, and other work at the United Nations. But the interesting thing about all of these places is that diversity is either very present or not present at all. So we think about numbers. This number, 57, is the percentage of people who graduated with four-year degrees who were women in 2014. It is also identically the number of professional um, jobs that are held by women. So it's a very um, capable number. But then we start looking at this. This is the number of women who graduated in information technology. This is the change in that number. So we used to have 59% of people graduating, and then it went down to 23. In computer science itself, that number from 1985 to 2014 has dropped dramatically. And even when you include sort of tangential majors, like around information systems, it doesn't get any better. When you look at minorities, it's appalling. So women in technology, 5% African American, 3% Asian, 1% Hispanic. And this really makes a difference. It makes a difference, as Peter said, to the diversity and the ability for an organization to be agile and adaptable, for the diversity of ideas to really complex problems like the ones we're facing here around homelessness in Los Angeles. And on a personal level, this number is the one that's most important to me. So 4%. I worked at an organization for 32 years. It's a little NASA organization up the street. 4% was the percentage of female IT managers. So in an organization with a huge number of IT managers, only 4% were women, and they defended that number as being appropriate. Now, the second number, 60%, is the reason why I work for Ted Ross. Raise your hand. Ted Ross and Mayor Eric Garcetti in the city of Los Angeles. In Ted's organization, the Information Technology Agency, 60% of the senior managers are women. <laughs> Woo! Give it up. That is not by happenstance, that is by intention. That is by the intention of making an organization that opens its doors, that wants to reflect the faces of the people it represents. And that's the reason why I, who I think is you know, a relatively capable technologist, moved from one organization to another. And that's the exodus that people will start seeing as more and more organizations reflect that diversity that we want to see. So this is my spirit animal today. <laughs> So I know Elastigirl, you know, the Incredibles, there's a little bit of you know, discrimination issues around her because she's a mom, but so am I. And, uh, and my kids all relate to her kids, too. So um, Elastigirl is agile, is flexible, and has superpowers way above and beyond what's on the surface. And I think all of you have superpowers as well. So here in this amazing city of Los Angeles, we are, as Peter said, one of the most diverse cities on the planet, here under the leadership of Mayor Eric Garcetti. <laughs> 147 languages are spoken in our city. We are amazing polyglot of languages, of ideas, of ethnicities. And part of getting to that is really understanding how we put all of that information together and open it up to people. So part of what we're doing at the city of Los Angeles is opening up that data. We've created partnerships with 10 universities across the Southland, including UCLA, of course, and, and that other university. Um, <laughs> go, go Trojans, too. 
uh, to be able to look at how we can train that next generation of data scientists, that next generation of people who are going to come into civic service and make a difference for the city and for the county and for the state and for the government. And so if you are interested in working in government, if you're interested in making a difference and actually changing people's lives, the people that you see every day on the streets of Los Angeles, volunteering, your student who wants to connect, your professor who wants to connect, just know we're hiring <laughs> a lot. Um, so we have an aging workforce in the, in the city of Los Angeles. In fact, in our information technology agency, we have about 53% retirement eligible next year. <laughs> so we're hiring. <laughs> If you're interested in anything around technology, whether it's looking at environmental factors, resiliency, information technology, computer science, we would love to have that conversation. Ted and I are here today and we have business cards. <laughs> but part of it is that maybe that's not your shtick, right? Maybe you're here because you're in that entrepreneurship track, track today. And so if that's the case, know that LA is far and away out overtaking all the other cities in the country and in fact on the planet in entrepreneurship and startups. I know there's a city in the northern part of our state, but you know it's having its own problems. And here we have growing space. We have a huge number of amazing companies like Snapchat. Google's come down here as well. We have companies from all over. And these are opportunities for all of you to either start up your own company, take that idea you have, work with one of our local incubators, and try to be able to make that big change in the world that you want to see. Part of what you would do to learn about that is to look at our open data portal at the city of Los Angeles. So we share a huge amount of data and information all across Los Angeles. We have GeoHub, which looks at the maps and information. So if you want to kind of layer maps and understand what's happening, it's a really interesting way of trying to visualize information. If you're looking at where to situate a business, if you're looking at where is the demographic that you want to serve, GeoHub is great. It's also used very heavily in the transportation sector. One of the partnerships we have is with Waze, and there are about two million Angelinos who subscribe to Waze, which is like half our population. I mean, you know, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm addicted to I, I have the most bizarre way of getting here from Pasadena today. <laughs> Glad I got here. Um, and so GeoHub, we take some of that transportation data about city closures and street parties and things, and we feed it to Waves, Waves, and so that they're able to help guide you around all of those potential obstacles that might happen once or twice with maybe a little bit of traffic in the city. Um, we also really care about transparency. I mean, we work for all of you, and every single person at the city understands that. Our controller is all about transparency, as is, oh, did I mention, Mayor Eric Garcetti. <laughs> so transparency here on the controllers panel shows you where the money's going, where all of the encumbrances are, what's happening. For people who are interested in looking at what is government spending and what are we spending it on, it's really important to be able to have this data in near as real time as possible so that people can really understand what's happening. We also, as Peter mentioned, have an or uh, initiative called Vision Zero. So biking is becoming more and more popular because sometimes that's faster than driving. Um, and we have a new bike share that opened up uh, downtown and around other areas, which is great. Um, Vision Zero, though, looks at the other side of that, the side of the fact that we have a very large number of fatalities that happen around bicycling. And so we looked at this and we uncovered this issue of this human issue and tragedy and said, but what do we know about it? Like, what can we really understand about it? And what we did is we uncovered that 60% of the fatalities occurred at only 6% of the intersections. So you're going to start seeing, and you've already seen if you've been downtown, green bike lanes. You've seen pylons come up around the bike shares so that it's easier for people to get on and off their bicycles in a safe way. You'll see changes at those intersections, police officers out directing traffic at high traffic times. And so we now can take scarce resources and put those on those 6% of the intersections, knowing that that's going to have a huge impact. We also share this information with lots of others. Here's a snapshot from um, South LA, from the LA Times, looking at trying to share and sort of demystify some of the data around it. And here's one that's actually a community-led project. So it's amazing that in a city as sort of impacted by population as we are, four million Angelinas, we just topped the four million mark, that there is a lot of unused land. And so these are like easements, pieces along the LA River, little bits and pieces of land here and there, but things that people could use for community gardens, our temporary shelters. And so this group called LA Open Acres mapped all of these and then connects people with those property owners or the city, because many times it's a city easement or area, 
and helps people start to create community gardens. So opening up data can drive all kinds of things. It can drive economic growth in Silicon Beach. It can drive startups and innovation. It can drive community good. It can also help our homelessness initiative. So here in the city of Los Angeles, 28,000 people live unsheltered on the streets. And that's a crime. That's just a human tragedy. The city this year has pledged $138 million towards permanent housing. And that is only the first of 10 years of that kind of pledge money. So part of what we're, yeah, give it up for Mayor Eric Garcetti and the city council. <laughs> And so part of what we're trying to do in our information technology world, and if you're interested in working on homelessness initiatives, come see Ted and I, um, that we are looking at the predictive analytics around this. How can we find out and decide six months ahead of time if somebody's at risk from falling into homelessness? How can we give them city support and services now so that that path bifurcates and they stay in their home, they stay with their family, they stay in their job, they get trained for another job? So that's the kind of work that we're doing. We're doing this in conjunction with the Google Innovation Labs with a new activity here we call Angels Lab. So homelessness and a variety of other issues around civic engagement are things that we're looking at in completely different ways. But all of this gets back to the fact that we are a city of four million people. Our city employees, OK, this number staggered me too, 48,000 people work for the city of Los Angeles. That's a lot. <laughs> but there are four million people. And those four million people are smart, and supportive and interested and passionate about lots of things. And so part of the work that I did at the White House was to create toolkits to let anybody become a citizen scientist, anybody be able to use open data, and anybody be able to gather a community of practice, community of interest around the kinds of things that you can do. So one of the things we're looking here and that we've been looking elsewhere is how we can start to understand earthquakes around Twitter. OK, so okay, those of you over the age of 30, uh, so we used to turn into KFWB, you know, to hear of the earthquake. <laughs> okay, those of you under the age of 30, Twitter, right? <laughs> so, and, and, and I'm, I'm a little on the other side, but I still go to Twitter first. So the thing is, is that the, the, the idea of how deep that impact is, how much damage, what kind of issues are happening, where there's blockages, who needs help. Actually, social media is a really interesting way to connect this and to connect our open data about where we have earthquake sensors and activities and support and LA fire and police that can go out and help with the places that are actually at need. And we're actually training a huge number of citizen scientists all over the country and here in Los Angeles about how to go out and do those kinds of observations, whether it's a young kid in their backyard looking at butterfly migration patterns. We're really working on that monarch butterfly um, is in danger here, or whether they're out looking at the spread of disease in cattle. Here's one activity I do with UCL Extension. Say hi, Renita. <laughs> Renita uh, Tyson is with UCLA Extension, and together we've developed this program with World Peace One where we take the classes from UCL Extension, take them down into the neighborhood. This one is a group of my emerging data scientists in South Central. And um, you can see the really sophisticated products that we start people working with. So these are Legos. And they build the future. They come to the class with an idea. And these are kids that one of these kids is homeless. Other kids have not ever graduated high school. Some people have been living on the streets. And these kids, OK, my kids are 17 to 70, um, get together and really figure out how to change the community from within. This is a group of data knots. So at NASA, we cr created a woman-focused, thanks again to the men here today, but a woman-focused consortium of data scientists. So these are women who are from the community. They're not from NASA, but they really wanted to learn more about data. And so we actually are on our third consortium now. And this is a great program in really trying to train people, give them new opportunities, and really lift up the profile of women in tech. And the last thing to mention is just that all of this is part of a global initiative. So part of the work I've been doing with the World Bank and the United Nations was creating this kind of change across Central Africa and throughout Africa and India. And so this is the first conference we held last year looking at how we can create open data for uh, fighting government corruption, for looking at issues around transportation, around health, around education, around gender equity, around things like child sacrifice around really important, complex, difficult cultural issues. 450 Africans showed up for our first conference. And next week, we hold another one in Kenya. So this is an ongoing global movement. And part of what was mentioned earlier today is the fact that we have to reach out and mentor each other. Everybody 
take that moment. Think about somebody that you think has potential that's unrealized. Reach out to them. Think about what you can do to help them, whether they are above you, whether they're below you, whether they're a friend, whether they're a colleague. It doesn't matter, but it is in your power to help change the way that they interact with the world. This is part of an ongoing global movement around the world, and the idea is really about releasing open data so that it empowers everybody to make better decisions. Whether that's how I'm going to get a job, whether it's what kind of degree I want to do in school, whether it's the idea of how I'm going to feed my family because I don't have much money today and I live in a food <coughs> desert, all of these are decisions that can be better powered by open data, by people working together to create things like LA Open Acres that help to make actual change. And I know that each of you, whichever superhero you identify with, that each of you has that power to go and change the world today and to make sure that you can be part of the future of Los Angeles. So go forth, enjoy the day, and have a great time, and learn and make change. <laughs>